Hi, Tom Lynch here, getting ready for one of my online workshops. Well, and I want to share with you a secret to make your paintings better. And I bet you're thinking it's going to have something to do with the brush. Oh, I got in a special color. That's got to be it. And it's got nothing to do with this. There's been several points in time along the way in my career where, oh, that just really made an impact on my paintings forever. And one of them was the plan, the sketch that I had before the brush took over. And so I'm going to share with you that little secret, and it will hopefully improve your paintings as well. Now, I wish that sketching and pencil drawings were accepted as a finished art form and sought after and matted and framed and in galleries and museums. Well, they're not as much as I would like, but they're a big part of the success of the finished painting. And I don't necessarily mean the refinement. You have skill and you're able to draw well and transfer what you see you know, to the paper because you can get those proportions just right. No, nope, I'm gonna share with you the pressure, the shading, the thick and thin, making a difference before the brush even touches the paper. All right, so here's your secret. I suggest for you when sketching have the end result sketch almost look like a finished piece of art instead of just a continuous, even pressured outline, you know, for the buildings. So notice a thick and thin, even some cross hatch shading. I would like this finished result. Here's another example. Take a close look at this. I feel this is a, you know, a little gem all unto itself. It really has a sense of shading and highlights and accents and variation. And that's the secret element. When I would then look at that sketch prior to doing the painting, I have a feeling of refinement and variety and variation and shading. So it's just kind of an automatic response for me to do that with my brush. Maybe the thick and thin would cause me to do a little pressure with my brush to change. Maybe the little dark accents here or there would cause me to come back with some highlights of dark or lifting out some highlights. I might plan out and think about the direction of light and play with the plan initially. Or a little bit of layering. Here's a sense of close and far just because of the way it is lightly shaded. So that thick and thin, that light and dark, that stop and go, I feel is a very successful way for the end result sketch to inspire you, the painter, to paint with variety of color, change of value, highlights, what I call the secret sauce, those little punch darks here or there that just gives the, the painting a little more pop and accent. So as you're sketching, keep that in mind. It's not about an even outline. Picture and think to yourself each time. Hey, this sketch turned out good. I'm not even going to add color or value and leave it just as it is. I'll share with you another tool that I use, the sketch and wash pencil. This is a really handy little tool. Uh, and it started out by my traveling. There's the sketch and wash. You can see with the highlight or not. So it's a pencil, but it is like a watercolor pencil. This dissolves really fast with water. I'll demonstrate and share with you. I would travel, and I've got some of my sketchbook examples that I've just, you know, torn out of the sketchbook. Here they are. Where I would travel and sketch with just the sketch and wash pencil. Because when I take a brush and dissolve it, as you'll see in a minute, hey, it's like watercolor painting and really simple to manage. So here's an example or two of, you know, just torn right out of my, you know, out of my sketchbook where I was at that particular location. And I wanted to vary the shading. Two-thirds dark, one-third light. Two-thirds light, one-third dark. Some dramatic shadows. And so I could play with this shading and these accents just with this sketch and wash pencil. Let me demonstrate. So here is a, uh, a line drawing sketch. Let me back you up just a little bit. The beauty of online, I can go zoom in close. So I would shade with this just as if it was a regular pencil and I was going to do some shading but I will share with you in a minute how this shading will dissolve. There's even another little thing I do. Let me show you real close. 
So here's the thick and thin, light and dark, but notice how delicate and whimsical and soft I sketched the buildings and the church and cathedral and the dome in the background. Already you get a feeling of close and far, somewhat the size changed, but even the way I sketched it would inspire me to handle this a lot differently than I would handle the paint for this one. So there's another little sketching idea, or what I have done too at times, after I had the sketch somewhat like this over here, and I felt it might have been something in the distance, I would take my kneaded eraser and go back and forth. So that's a suggestion that I have, you know, for my students. I like a lot of line drawing, as you can see here, you know, prior to doing a painting. But every once in a while, some of my students, I see the line drawing is controlling and holding, you know, their attention too much. So I then suggest for them to take and use a kneaded eraser and go over their example to take away 10, 20, 30 percent of the of the sketch. And that will inspire me to have a lost and found thick and thin highlights and accents for something like a Sedona mountain range in the background. So again, the main enemy is that even perfect continuous line drawing to start with. So here I have taken a little bit of, I'm going to get this out of the way. I'll share with you some examples. Back you up. You can see I'm just going to grab some clear water. Let's grab a clean bucket. Now they make super little brushes. If you haven't seen them, they're called water brushes. And they have in them the ability to hold water. And so that's called a water brush. So I would travel with just a mechanical pencil is what I use for the beginning drawing. Were I to turn it into a shaded drawing, then I had the sketch and wash pencil. And I don't need a bucket of water because there are these brushes that you can unscrew and add water into the barrel. And so just a little squeeze. I suppose you want to see that, so I'll demonstrate that as well. Let me load up some water on this, not make too much of a mess. All right, so you have a brush of water or you have your water brush. And watch this. Let's get you in close. Watch how I can now turn that into some shaded and tone so I can just squeeze out a little bit. And that, I'm just squeezing, getting the water out to the edge. And it dissolves super quick. So I can now begin turning this into a tone, black and white, little study. There, I had to just get this started. I hadn't used it in a while. Now, I might pick up some pigment that is dissolved, and instead of adding more shading pigment here, I could just pick up and transfer for a lighter value. You can also, after there's already water in place, you can come back and do this sketch and wash pencil shading over that water, and it will dissolve it quickly at the same time. So I can add new sketch and wash shading and look at how fast, how quickly that dissolves. Pick up some of that shading and I'll add it to this side of the cathedral. So a lot of fun can be had. I could spend a couple, an hour on this and have a ball. But I wanted to show with you how easy and quick it dissolves. But prior to getting to this particular sketch, I also wanted to show you something else. Leave it to me. In my classes, I tell the students, oh, by the way, I want you to sketch this three or four times. <laughs> and I could just hear as you're reading the email, oh, my gosh, thanks a lot. You've been sketching forever. and Now I have a couple hours of work to do, but not so. So if you're in one of my classes and I ask you to do a couple of sketches, uh, here's a neat little trick that I'll share with you, and I'll finish off sharing with you some of the uh, sketch and wash examples. So if you can do a printout, you know, of the subject, uh, you could take and do a, so there's might have been a scene I was suggesting for the students. And if this is the one, it's not, but if that was one that I wanted them to s sketch several of, take a magic marker and do an outline. So this is just a black and white printout 
of one of my examples. But instead of reinventing the wheel and having to sketch it over and over each time, you could take that black marker and then now put a, a, a sheet of paper over it and you can see right through this super easily. I think you'll be able to see this as well. And so I can put it up to a light and I can actually see the line drawing you know, quite effectively. So if you drew it one time, take one of those sketches, print it out, do a black marker on it, have it behind your watercolor paper, and then you can see right through it, and you can see that outline so that you can take and create several sketches uh, at the same time. Let me get that out of your eye. All right, let me finish off, share with you uh, a couple of those sketch and wash examples uh, for you to see. So here are some little paintings. These are done plain air on location. Instead of doing a full color painting, I decided, hey, I'm just having so much fun. I'm going to do a black and white creative little art piece. Some of the super dark that you might see in a place or two is an extra dark pencil called a ebony, number nine super dark pencil. That's a spot that you might see here. It's the super black and super dark. But all of this and all of this, 99% of this is done with the sketch and wash pencil that dissolves. Every now and then, you can see here, I added a touch of color, and that was a watercolor pencil. But look at how beautifully that sketch and wash pencil dissolves. You can just keep going back and forth and dissolve it. You could leave a little texture from when it was per first put down. So all of this shading is sketch and wash, and the color that you see is a watercolor pencil. And so here's a Florida example of that. I'll just add a little watercolor pencil for a touch of my focal point. You can get many different layers, many different values, many different shadings. Here I add a little more color in one of my Puerto Vallarta at the Casa workshops, again, on location. Look at how soft and muted you can make things in the background. Touch a color, and then as you come a little bit closer, and a lot of color as you come up to the focal point. Here may look like an elaborate one. I did this for a plein air festival in Pennsylvania. It was raining. All the oil artists could be outside painting under an umbrella, and we would, watercolor artists, we couldn't have any water come near our painting. So I went indoors and painted into a, a cafe called CeCe's Cafe. And so that was sketch and wash. And she had all these little red cups and a little red sign in her window reflecting on the countertop. So just a hint of, of red uh, was done with a watercolor pencil, but all the little subtle shadings. But the secret to this is what I want to make sure you understand completely. And that was way back here, is how to sketch with a thick and thin, even an occasional crosshatch uh, shading, and create a little miniature gem of finished art for, think about just framing it just that particular way, or, or both, Take a kneaded eraser and go back and forth and smear and smudge a little bit. Take away that because I have found uh, in workshops that pencil line controlled the artist too much. It was the reason the painting was too tight. They had a very even pencil line and that's where they first put their brush mark was on that pencil line and they carried it across to the next pencil line and then they stopped and the painting had this choppiness to it. So if I can help you a little bit with your painting, join me in a workshop. But I also want to take a minute and help you with a point in time when I got better and it wasn't the brush, it wasn't a skill with the brush, it wasn't a color or a contrast, it was the pencil, the way I started. It inspired me to paint with a variety of color, maybe a little looser, maybe a little more contrast, accents, more importantly than getting it just right photographically. So sketch away, have fun. And enjoy sketching as a great creative process. Yes, I don't always leave the pencil line showing, and when I'm all finished, I'll erase some of the pencil line. I'm asked that a lot. You know, Tom, look at the pencil line up here, and I go, well, wait a minute. Look how close you are, you know, to the finished painting. I evaluate five times the height, what I was taught as the proper viewing distance. And from that point, if I could still see a hard pencil line, then I would get the eraser out, you know, and erase it away. But just because you could find a pencil line this close doesn't mean it has to be removed. It's part of the creative process. So that's just my thought. I thought I'd share with you a little bit of creativity with the art before the brush got a chance to start. 
Join me in some online workshops. We'll share with you more tips and techniques, and we'll say I have some fun along the way. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.